Hey book lovers, Victoria here and you're watching my books me and I am still alive if anyone was actually worried because I haven't uploaded in like a whole month. Um, short version, I was planning on uploading during February but I had little motivation. I mean kind of in a reading slump, kind of in a whole reading booktube blogging slump um, so I haven't uploaded. Also it's been really hot here in Australia and when it's really hot I have literally no motivation. Today is a nice cooler day which is really good and I've just reorganized my bookshelf and I've already uploaded that reorganization video so I will link here if you guys want to go check that out. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to be doing my February book haul. I got quite a few books during the month of February. Some of them haven't arrived yet. I had to buy some books obviously for university which I'm starting Depending when this goes up, the start of March is when I'm starting my two university classes for this semester. And the rest of the books I got are just really cheap books that I found and that sound really interesting. So let's get into it. So the first three books I got this month were kindly sent to me by publishers. The first book was sent to me by HarperCollins Australia and that is The Siren by Kira Cass. This is Kira's, what well, was her first, it was her debut novel that was only released as an ebook form and then she released the selection series. Um, so she, since then she has rewritten this book and HarperCollins has released it and it came out at the end of January. I haven't read it yet. I'm planning on reading it soon. But like I said, I've been in a bit of a reading slump, but I, I'm very keen to see if I will like this. I love the selection series and I want to see if I enjoy Kirikasa's writing in another, uh, you know, in another book, in another series and just see if, you know, I actually do like her work. It's not just that one series. Um, but this one is about... Um, this one is about obviously a siren and sirens live in the ocean, um, by the ocean. Anyway, they lure, from what I can remember, they lure sailors into the watery grave. Um, but she ends up falling in love with a guy and it is both, it is dangerous to both be with him and not be with him. Um, so yeah, that's all I really know about this one and I'm very keen to read it, so hopefully I get to it soon. The next book was kindly sent to me by Hatchet Australia, um, and that is Book of Lies by Terry Terry. This one is coming out in March. It might already be out, I'm not quite sure. There's dates everywhere about when this is meant to be coming out, but I'm, from what I can remember it comes out in March. Um, and this is a um, witchy read about these two twins, Quinn and Piper. Um, but they've never met and that is because they are part of a, a coven where an ancient prophecy said that two that twins will be born into this family and they'll both be very powerful um, and they'll be so powerful that one will have to kill the other um, one is good one is evil kind of thing um, and that's all I really know um, one twin can command the darkness the other could hold the key to breaking the curse um, so I don't really know too much more about this one. I don't really want to know too much more about it. I'm very keen to get into this one at some point. Hopefully maybe during March. I don't really know. But it's very intriguing and I really love the cover. Finally, the last book that I got from a publisher was also kindly sent to me by Hatchet Australia and that is a finished copy of The Last Sword by Victoria Aveyard. I was not expecting it to get a finished copy. I had previously gotten a uncorrected proof from, ha from Hatchet. Um, so I wasn't really expecting it. Although in hindsight, when I think about it now, I probably could have been expecting it because I have, you know, publishers usually do send finished copies to um, reviewers where they have sent a, an uncorrected proof. But anyway, it is so pretty and beautiful and I love this book so much. I highly recommend going picking it up. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I was planning on filming a review video for this, but I never got around to it, so I will link below to my written review of this one. I highly recommend it if you love Red Queen. This book is part of the reason why I was in a reading slot this month, which I'll talk about more in my wrap up. So now moving on to other books that I got this month. The next book I got is Don't Look Back by S.B. Hayes. I don't really know too much about this one. Um, it was really cheap on Booktopia this month, um, but it's about Sinead's brother Patrick. He's an addict, he's manipulative, controlling and dangerous, and now he's missing. Sinead doesn't, all, doesn't want to play Patrick's games. She wants to walk away, but she can't. The search for him leads her to a remote mansion and to James, a boy looking for his own answers. But even in the safety of James's arms, Sinead knows something isn't right. Patrick might have disappeared, but he's still there somewhere watching her. 
um, so it just sounded like a really cool psychological book. I'm really into them at the moment, so I want to read more. And this one sounds like a really interesting one. Don't really know too much more about it. Haven't really heard anything about it, but keen to give it a go. Next book I picked up was Science Point to Yes by Sandy Hall. Sandy Hall is the author of A Little Something Different, which I read last year, and I really enjoyed it. And when I heard that this was coming out, I was keen for it, but I hadn't picked it up yet. Saw it in Big W for like $11. So I picked it up, haven't read it yet, although my mum has actually read this and she really enjoyed it. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing if I'm going to enjoy it. But anyway, I don't really know too much about what this is about, but I really enjoyed a little something different. It's not told in the same style where it's um, all different perspectives apart from the two main characters. This is, I think, just told regularly. Yeah, it's just regular book, just a light, fun, you know, contemporary, so I'm keen to read this one. I definitely think this would be a good book to read at the moment, so pull me out of this reading slot moment, but we'll see. Next two books I got were like $3 each from Booktopia this month, and they are The Rogue's Princess and The Queen's Lady by Eve Edwards. These are books two and three in, I think it's called The Other Countess series, trilogy, I don't know. The first book in the series is called The Other Countess and I never got that one because at the time it was full price and I was just buying cheap books. I had like a lot of cheap books. Um, but these are about, these are set during the Elizabethan era. This one is set in London, England, 1586. This one is set in Surrey, England, 1584. And I think the other one is set two years earlier than these books. Um, and it just follows, I think it's a companion series that just follows these three women um, in service of the Queen maybe, I'm not quite sure. But I love historic fiction, I love the Elizabethan and Tudor period, so I'm keen to give these ones a go when I get the first book. Maybe I don't need the first book though if they are just companion novels, I don't know, we'll see. The next book. The next book I picked up this month um, has just come out, I think it came out the start of February or the end of January, I'm not quite sure, but it is My Sister Rosa by Justine La Balancia. I think I butchered that last name, I'm so sorry. I don't really know too much about this, I was again perusing Booktopia and it came up, um, but it's also a psychological book, it's about, um, you know what, I'm just going to read the back. Um, Chi Taylor's little sister Rosa is smart, talented, pretty, and a psychopath. She hasn't hurt anyone yet, but she's certain it's just a matter of time. When their parents move them overseas yet again, this time to New York City, Chi writes his usual new city list. He wants to spar, not just to train in the boxing gym. He wants a girlfriend. He wants to go home to Sydney and his three best friends. He wants to keep Rosa under control. But Chi knows his first duty is to his sister, who is playing increasingly complex and disturbing games. Can he protect Rosa from the world and the world from Rosa? So yeah, I don't really know too much more about it, but I have seen it's got pretty good reviews, so I'm keen to get into it. Um, and also, this is the fun bit, one of the reasons why I also got it. But it's a signed book, so that's fun too. Next book I got is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I was perusing for my university textbooks, and I was looking through my wish list to see if any books had been dropped in price or anything like this, and this was only $8. It had probably dropped like five dollars so I was like that's a sign I need to get it this was really big last year everyone was reading it last year for some reason um, that I saw but it is kind of a re not a retelling but like an extension of I think it's the Iliad or the Odyssey I don't really know yeah, the Iliad um, where it's kind of like yeah a bit of an extension of the Iliad um, with Achilles um, and I don't really know. I don't know too much about the Iliad in itself. Um, but again, this is historic fiction, kind of, yeah, historic fiction. It's ancient Greece. And I love both of those things. And so I'm very keen to read this one. Um, and like I said, a lot of people were highly praising it last year. And so, yeah, very keen for this one. Next book I got, I was so shocked to see it was only $4. Um, and you will see why, because it is a hardback autobiography. It did come out a couple of years ago, but it was only $4. It dropped like, it was $40 <laughs> when I first saw it. So that is insane. That's why I got this book. It is Reg Grundy, but obviously Reg Grundy, he is um, an, oh, I can't think of, um, he's Australia's 
uh, one of Australia's most, uh, most successful media entrepreneurs, the man behind such shows as Wheel of Fortune, Sales at the Century, Perfect Match, Prisoner, Sons and Daughters, Young Doctors, and a host of others, including the great international hit Neighbours. Um, that's the main reason why I got this, because he is the master, well, one of the masterminds behind um, Neighbours, and I love Neighbours, and I also love all the other, well, I haven't seen the thing, and I just also love reading about, um, and I also enjoy some of the other shows that he has been behind. A lot of them are off the air now, like, he's, I think he's in his 70s, so a lot of, a lot of his shows are off the air, but I do love, like, old Australian TV shows, they're just really fun, and so I'm just really keen to read this, and like I said, it was $4. I wasn't planning on getting this one anytime soon, because it is, it was $44, um, and while I do love reading autobiographies and biographies, I'm not a huge fan of them, um, but like I said, $4, can't pass off that, can't pass up that opportunity to get a new hardback. Um, so I'm very keen to read this one at some point, just moseying my way through this. The next book I got was Tutankhamun's Funeral by... I don't really know who it's by. Um, but it is published by the Metropolitan, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. So I don't really know who... Oh, a bit E. Winlock. There we go. Um, and this is just a book about the artifacts that were found with Tutankhamun and um, um, a small cache of materials that had been discovered in 1907 which have been linked to Tutankhamun's burial process. Um, it's just, yeah, really just about his burial, his funeral and how that would have taken place. Um, and I love Tutankhamun. I'm very intrigued by ancient Egypt. I just love history in general. Um, so this was, um, again, it was a reduced book and it's just a really beautifully designed book and I can't wait to just make my way through this one. Finally, the last book that has actually, that I got this month that has arrived by the time I'm filming this is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and I just bent the pages which I'm so annoyed. Um, but this is one of the books I need to read for one of my uh, uni classes and I'm going to talk about these more probably next week. Hopefully all my books will have arrived by then. I'm going to reads video um, but um, one of the classes I am taking is the English novel from Austin to Lawrence which is just looking at um, English like classic English novels over like a century period I think it is and this is one of them I haven't read any of the books I have to do for that class um, and I've only heard of two of them <laughs> and this is one of them so um, I'm very keen to read this one. This is like the third, this will be the third one I have to read, so I don't have to read it till the end of the, end of March, early April. Um, and I'm very excited. I still don't really know what Jane Eyre is about. So, I'm so glad I'm going to be finally able to read it and have really sort of motivation to read it, not just I'll get to it one day and probably never read it. The fact that I have to read these classics for university is just a bit more of a drive and a push to get them read. So these are all the books that I got in February. I'm pleased with all of them. Like I said, most of them were discounted books. Others were uni books. So they were necessity buys. And hopefully I will get around to reading them in the coming months. So that is it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. It's so nice to be back. And I will see you tomorrow with my wrap up and TBR. I didn't read much during February. So it's going to be a very quick video. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.